Coming up next, I'll tell you what to do if you can't stand another day in your job. And then remote workers are winning the war on whether or not they're going back. And then some words of wisdom from Tom Hanks. And I'm going to coach you up. Let's go. All right, folks, welcome to the Kid Coleman Show, where we help you win at work and in life. We're going to give you the competitive edge to make more money and experience more meaning. All right, I'm talking to some folks today that feel like they're in the middle of a dumpster fire. Mentally, emotionally, and it may even feel like you're physically in a workplace that it's just like, I can't, my skin's crawling, I'm, I'm, I'm dying, I got to get out of here. I can't stand another day in this toxic job. You're done. I can't do it anymore, Ken. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, It might be true. Uh, But but, but whether or not you can or can't, I get it. I'm so sorry. I know what it's like. I've been there. And uh, let's just see what the data says about a true toxic work culture. A toxic company culture is 10.4 times more powerful than compensation in predicting a company's attrition rate, right? So we got a fancy word there, right? A couple fancy words. What does that mean? That you can look at the company's culture, and if it's toxic, it's 10.5 times more powerful than if you're paying people the max. In other words, you can give people a great paycheck, And you can have some pretty good benefits, maybe even great benefits. And it's not enough to keep people there if the environment is toxic. It's just not. Because, uh, listen, provision and providing for the people we love, uh, advancing in our professional career, all of those things matter to people. But they don't matter enough to be miserable. And at some point, they're going to check out on you. Now, let me call this out. Some people will check out on you and keep taking your check. Companies. I mean, over the last five years, we've seen Gallup do this poll. And and we routinely see that the numbers are between 68 and 70% of people are disengaged. Okay, they're there. All right, but they're not engaged. So if you have a toxic culture, people will eventually either leave you all together right? So they've hit the exits or they shut down on you. I mean, how, come on. How many of you ever had a toddler or a teenager shut down on you? I mean, come on. They just, they go into shutdown mode. Oh, they're, their body's there, but their mind, their soul, it's long gone. And this is a massive problem. So I'm talking to you leaders for a second. So we got a lot of people who watch the show, listen to the show, different worlds. And if you're getting promoted stage five of our seven stages, you're going to be in leadership. All right. But let's talk now specifically to those of you who are in this awful, toxic environment. There's five things you need to do starting today. You've had it. You can't stay at this job any longer. They treat you like crap. You're done. Five things you do. Number one, let's start with getting some support from people who love you dearly and value you. See, because you don't feel loved and you don't feel valued. So the first thing we want to do is we got to retreat to emotional safety today. I mean, I'd call a good friend, a good pal. I'd call my wife, say, wife, like you said that, wife. Hey, wife, don't, don't say that. Hey, sweetheart, hey, dear, whatever you say to your spouse, your significant other. We need a date night tonight. I, I just need to. Whatever it is, retreat to the safety and support of friends and family, and you've got to let this out. you got to tell them, here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm feeling. And I just need you to listen. I I, 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 I need some perspective. I I need some encouragement. Got to do it. Number two, rest. Look, we've already decided we're not going to stay in this dumpster fire much longer. So let's start with, hey, let's take a mental health day. And can I just say this? If you're feeling this bad emotionally and mentally, calling in sick to me ain't lying. You're mentally sick. You really are. It might be temporary. You got a mental cold. I'm not saying you've got mental illness. I'm saying you got a mental cold. 
If I'm stressed out of my mind or dealing with uh, brief and very acute anxiety, it's like having a mental cold. I, I, I can't come in today. By the way, you're actually doing the company a favor, so don't feel guilty about this. You're not there, so don't be there. You're not there mentally and emotionally, so don't be there physically. I'd take a sick day. Rest. Uh, change your schedule up over the uh, impending weekend that might be on its way. You know, change it up. Like, detox. Detach. Whatever that looks like, you got to do that. All right, number three. Start to establish some boundaries. Okay? Now, this is where the rubber meets the road. Notice on these these first two, seek support, get rest. Uh, boundaries is we, uh, what boundaries means here is that many of us can't just walk today. You can't walk in and because of your financial realities, you may be living paycheck to paycheck or things are just too tight. And we don't want to hit your emergency fund because of a job transition. So you can't leave right away. And so let's be realistic here. I don't want anybody jumping off of a cliff just because we're like, well, I mean, hey, I mean, it's an awful place. I got to jump. No, you don't. So boundaries are, okay, we're in a season now of transition. We've got to build a bridge, if you will, to get where you want to go. And, and, and so at this point, we say, all right, uh, what are the boundaries that I need to set in place over the next three weeks, six weeks, three months, whatever it looks like to go from here to there? We're going to set some boundaries. I'm going to start saying no. I'm not going to be a jerk about it. I'm not going to be an immature toddler about it. But we're going to say no. We're going to put some boundaries in place. We're going to guard ourselves because we know we are in a transition. And so we have a little bit more freedom. You ought to have more freedom to do this. Number uh, number four, uh, let's actually start getting healthy. There's no need to wait to get healthy. All right? So, in fact, uh, it ought to be your priority to go, wait a second, I now know that I am in such an unhealthy place and I've made the decision, I'm free to say, life is too short to work like this. So I'm going to get healthy. Diet, exercise, counseling, hanging out with different people that are positive, that are focused on a better future, this is how we get healthy. Even in the midst of a toxic workplace, we can get healthy to where it's like, all right, this is not affecting me that much. You ever been around a bunch of gossipers and it didn't affect you? The reason that was the case is because you're healthy. You're around all this, all these little vultures and just picking a carcass apart. And you're there because you kind of have to be. And you're like, oh, gross. That's, that's, that's disgusting. But it doesn't wreck your day. Finally, let's create a plan for the exit. Begin planning that's looking, finding a place where you could do the work you enjoy that creates a result that matters to you. And oh, by the way, you matter to them. Now, why do we do this? Why does this matter to, to get on this today? Because life is too short to do work that drains you. Let me say that again. I'm going to talk to Instagram Live, too, on this one. Life is too short to do work that drains you. What are we doing? Why do we accept that? You shouldn't come home depleted and discouraged and disillusioned and despondent. You get to choose. You matter. You have what it takes. In the news next. You were created to fill a unique role in this world, but figuring out what that is can feel overwhelming. That's why we created the Get Clear Career Assessment. In less than 15 minutes, you'll get customized results that clarify and verify what you do best, the work you love, and the results you want to produce. You'll even get a list of professional possibilities to help you jumpstart the job search. To get started, go to kencoleman.com slash assessment. All right, folks, I am your coach helping you get the competitive edge to do what you were born to do. And you're going to make more money and make a greater impact than you could ever possibly imagine because the world needs what you have to offer. Uh, and some of you uh, are thinking about a pivot and you're going, Ken, I need ideas. And so 
uh, I have partnered up with Ramsey Academy, Ramsey Career Academy. It's a new initiative here at Ramsey Solutions coming out of our Ramsey Education Department. I'm fired up about it, fired up about it as much as anything I've been fired up about in a long time. And that's saying something because I'm easily fired up. Um, we created this project management course. And the reason we did this is because project management is one of the most lucrative, versatile career paths in the world right now. Uh, you can go so many directions with the skill and experience of project management, doing project management work, but then moving up the ladder. You can go to the C-suite. Um, you, you can start your own business. I mean, it is a great, great career path expected to grow by 33% over the next five to seven years. And so we have launched a very popular four-week course. Uh, we've already filled two of them. We got a third one coming up. It's called Project Management 101. And uh, Ramsey Solutions Chief Technology Officer Brendan Wojko and myself, we co-teach because Brandon hires and leads and guides all of our project managers. He's an expert on a specific type, a genre of project management. So we unveil, equip, and uh, get you ready for that gig uh, or a full career path in it wherever you are. If you want to kick the tires and go, is it right for me? This course, Project Management 101, answers all the questions, gives you a proven plan to stand out and win. Spots are limited. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash project. The website, just to check it out, get more information, RamseySolutions.com slash project. So there you go. All right. I am a man of the people, you people. I am helping you by informing you. What are the trends? What's happening right now? How does it affect you in your professional growth? Let's go. It's time for In the News. All right, here we go. The uh, YouTube crazies that are watching live on YouTube, they like it when I do this. So there it is. Uh, they like it more than I like it, Alex. I like. I started it because I like it. Now I feel guilty if I don't give the people what they want. So there you go. There's an extra one for the Instagram Live folks that are watching. They're like, what is he doing? They have no idea what's happening right now. Uh, here's the headline from Bloomberg. Workers are, are winning the return to office war. I, I'm going to tell you something. I hate the headline. I don't think it's a war. I just think the we have this new work order. Can I say that? Like the new world order, right? You got all these conspiracy theorists and whatever. They be. But we are in a season of transition that I believe is establishing a new work order, right? 100% uh, remote work, hybrid work. We're some days in the office, some days at home. Four-day work week is coming around the corner. Uh, this is a reset uh, in the world of work. And, uh, boy, it is very interesting. Uh, so this article is saying that workers are winning the war. I don't think it's a war. I don't think that's the wrong posture for you workers. And, again, I'm encouraging you. I'm all for remote work. We don't do it here at Ramsey, but I'm, I'm not against remote work. I've got friends that do it very, very well and that run companies. That are, so, uh, you know, look. Whatever, But this posture of, uh, what I caution you against is this posture of, I'm never going to go back in the office again. Now, okay, uh, I, I support your right to do that. I think you have more opportunities to do that than ever before. But, hey, let's just be open. That's all I want you to do. All right, here we go. Uh, office occupancy rates have now flatlined at 43%. According to Castle Systems, what they do is they collect figures uh, from all these office buildings in the 10 largest business districts and basically key swipes, key fobs, all this kind of stuff, okay? And um, the point here that the, the, that the uh, writer is making in this article is uh, that companies have now gathered all the low-fringing, uh, low, low uh, low-hanging fruit. There you go, folks. The mind just went on its own there. Low-hanging fruit. And so what they're saying is, is like, the 43% since the flat line, this is how many people have returned to work. Um, this this author is saying, I think they've pretty much gotten everybody that's willing to come back. Um, I don't know that I disagree with that. That, that could very well be true. Uh, returning workers, though, uh, the, 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 the <laughs> this is great. The, the appeal... The process by which companies are trying to drag people back is pretty funny, and I don't know that it's working. What say you? Here we go. Uh, drink parties, swag bags, 
complimentary classes, uh, funsy activities, um, Alphabet Inc.'s uh, Google treated its staff to a concert by Lizzo. Microsoft throws parties with local music talent. Qualcomm puts on fitness classes for work in the office. I personally think it would be great if Dave just gave us a chance to do goat yoga just one time. But we're all back. All right? Joe's looking at me like I'm nuts. Come on, dude. You and me in a goat yoga class? That'd be funny. That'd be funny. It'd Look be at something. You. Yeah, it would. Uh, so the question is, is it working? The data says it's not working. The data says that it's kind of flatlined in these 10 biggest areas. Now, uh, going on, when you look at uh, some of the data, Corn Ferry, uh, a consultancy business, found that 64% of people feared that returning to work would hurt their mental health. Two-thirds of Google employees are unhappy about having to return to work three days a week. So there are several reasons. Let's just kind of highlight the reasons why so many people still don't want to come back. Obviously, some people are still very fearful uh, over COVID. Um, let's be real honest. The rising cost of gas and commuting is a big deal. This is not to be minimized. This hits real real people really hard in their budgets. Um, how about in some of these large cities where you had a lot of anti-police movements and things are crazy? Look at New York, San Francisco, two of the largest areas of remote workers. Listen, it's chaos in those cities right now. Crime is up. Homelessness is up. It's scary stuff. Why? If, if I used to work in Manhattan, I'm going to tell you right now, I got no shame. I wouldn't want to ride the subway system in New York right now. And I love New York. I love Manhattan. I love going there. I'm not riding the subway. Not right now. No. Um. Now, Castle, I mentioned them earlier. They show higher occupancy in offices in Austin and Dallas versus in New York and San Francisco. Why? Well, you don't have as long of a commute in Austin and Dallas. You don't have to worry about public transportation as much. A Harris poll found that 78% of employees were concerned about being able to afford gas for their commutes. Now, here's the bottom line. Companies and you, the, the worker, how can you help your leaders? Instead of demanding, hey, I'm not coming back, how about coming to the table? I want to help you, the people. We want to stay home. Come to your leader with three or four ideas or solutions as to how, through technology and some culture building strategies and things that you do off and on, can help you get work done and do it in a way that promotes a healthy environment in a culture where collaboration and connectivity can, in fact, happen. It is possible. All right, the next article um, this is from Wall Street Journal. Confessions of your company's chief happiness officer. Now, this is a solution that I think even small businesses can do. Now, you may not be able to afford to pay someone full-time to be a chief happiness officer. A lot of big-time corporations are doing it. And it's not a silly position. Um, they're responsible. But but if you could have someone co-op this and kind of do this even 10 or 20% of the time by just thinking of, if I'm the chief happiness officer part, part, part-time in a small business or in a large business, hey, this is a real play. What do they do? Well, they do more than just fun team building. They're answering questions about benefits and payroll so people feel wanted and cared for and valued and safe. Uh, they deal with signing contracts and coming up with company events, uh, work with leaders and their team members when there's just an, uh, a series of unhappy moments here, figuring out if there's something here. Uh, this is interesting. Thousands of workers now identify as a chief happiness officer on LinkedIn, 65% more than just a year ago. It's growing. It's an interesting idea. Chief happiness officer. All right, coming up next, we coach you up. Did you know recruiters take an average of six seconds to scan a resume? And that's if they ever see it in the first place. In fact, 75% of resumes are rejected before reaching a hiring manager. Listen, folks, if you want to get hired, you've got to make sure your resume is getting noticed. That's why we created How to Write the Perfect Resume. This free guide will walk you through the five steps to stand out in the hiring process and land your dream job. To get started, go to kencoleman.com slash resume.
All right, folks, welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show. So excited to have you with us, coaching you up today. We're about ready to jump into our coaching session. And uh, a reminder to you, uh, we want more calls from people who are feeling they're in a dumpster fire, they're stuck, no way out, uh, feeling massive pressure to make a decision, but you need some advice, some guidance. We'll change your name, your location, the type of work you do. None of that matters um, to the show. What matters is is that you and other people who are in your position who may not be willing to call can hear us talk through there is an escape. There is a possibility. I can get out. How do I do it? What's this? What, what's the strategy? There's the professional strategy. There's the emotional stuff. And then there's the financial. And so I want to coach you through that, 844-747-2577. Or if you want to schedule the call, email Amanda, ask at KenColeman.com. We're looking for more stuck calls. You're in a current situation. We can't even think about long-term dream job. We just got to get out of the fire. And uh, we want to help you there, all right? So uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, YouTube crazies, by the way. Uh, good crowd in there today, Alex. So tell me if there's anything uh, good to get to maybe a little bit later in the program. Don't forget, by the way, we've got a great nugget for Tom Hanks, uh, from Tom Hanks, rather, that we're going to end the show with today that I just think, you know, I saw it, I sent it to Alex, and I said, I needed this. Like, I watched this, and I want the show, I want the audience to see it because it was good for me. Oh, it was good for me. Good for me as a husband. Good for me as a father. And good for me as a professional. So uh, that's coming up. It's going to be great. All right, but first we're going to get to the phones. Gina joins us in the City of Angels, Los Angeles, California. Gina, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, how are you? Gina, I'm living the dream. How can I help you? I just have a question. I'm having a hard time answering questions during my interview process. I'm in the process of kind of switching jobs and looking for something else Okay. that I noticed that and just kind of having, I'm getting like the same question that's asked and I'm having a hard time answering that. So I want to make sure, and it's kind of like an issue that I'm having with school with the vaccine mandate. So I want to be able to answer that question with honesty, but at the same time, you know, you know, just be able to sell myself so I know I can, you know, get the job because I'm qualified. I have the experience, but I noticed that it's that one question that I feel it's causing issues and okay, can in my we, interview that's preventing yeah. me from getting the from uh, from getting you know the job. Sure. Okay. Great. Let's break that question down. Can you give it to me? Word it the way that you're getting it. Um, well, I'm a nursing student fighting the vaccine mandate, but I'm also a healthcare worker. So um, I'm looking for because because of my situation, I am in Los Angeles County, or I live in Los Angeles County. It's, unfortunately, a lot of places are not hiring. I was working in healthcare, and I lost. I was kind of doing like travel nursing, but like for CNAs. So right. I kind of lost all those contracts. And then um, I applied to other places. I tried like other counties in my area. And unfortunately, because of, they're not saying because of the vaccine, but because of it, that's essentially why I'm not getting hired. Right. So, so, so I don't how know is how the, to answer the question so like how, when I'm asked. Okay. So sorry, go I'm, ahead. Well, I'm sorry. I'm trying to jump in because how is the question being asked? Can you give they're me a version me? of it? Pretty much the same question has been asked the last two interviews is, if given the opportunity to get back into the nursing program, will you accept that position? Will you accept it? And will you still work here? And I told them, you know, some jobs I won't be able to because they are Monday through Friday, but some jobs I know I could. If it's healthcare, I know I could. But if it's like banking, which is what I used to do or anything else, I know I would have to cut back hours because of school and clinicals. Okay, so... so just like. Okay, I'm a little confused, so I'm asking a couple questions to get on the same page with you. Mm -hmm. You kept mentioning the vaccine. Is the vaccine part of this? this? Yeah, it's part of it. Okay, so but the question that's being asked is not vaccine related. It's if given the well, opportunity, would they'll you they'll ask me, well, why are you not in the program? And I tell them because of the vaccine. Okay, so that's what I need to understand. So the reason you're not in the yeah, program is because you are not willing to take the vaccine. Yes. Okay. All right. So when are they you? ask you are you willing, if given the opportunity, um, the answer is, the real answer is, is you're willing if it's the right fit because you're currently in school and mm -hmm. if the vaccine is not required. That's your answer. Mm -hmm. Am I right? 
Yes. Okay, well, there's only one way to answer that. You can't spin that one. And I'm not suggesting that you're asking me to help you spin it. No. But if I hear you correctly, it's like you're willing. So I support anybody's position on whether or not you want to get it or not. So you've mm -hmm. already made that decision. You're not going to change your mind. You've already, yeah. that's why you're not in the program. Mm -hmm. So that's a non negotiable for you. Mm -hmm. But we can deal with that at any point in the interview. Like you, if they offer you the job and then they say, we got to be vaccinated, you can deal with it when it gets to that point. Mm -hmm. But or, I feel like that question has been asked at every, at least course. the last like three interviews are like, well, can you provide proof of vaccination? I'm like, no, I just, I just explained that that's why I'm on pause right. in the nursing program. Right. And then, and so just so said, we okay, have a problem. So get back. Mm -hmm. It's a non-starter. I don't know. I mean, I guess you could, the only thing I could think of is that you do some research. Mm -hmm. And you find out if there's any healthcare job available in Los Angeles County or surrounding counties where it's not going to be required. I got to tell you, based on the news, if I had to bet on it, I'd put money on the fact that there's not one healthcare position in all of California. Yeah, it's kind of all over right now. So it's like I, a hit or miss. Yeah. Okay, but my point is, so we got to remove the hit or miss. Mm -hmm. You got to find you got to find the ones, the locations where you can do the work you want to do, where they're not going to require it. Mm -hmm. that's our starting point yes so i appreciate your question but the question for me is not hey ken how do i handle this in an interview the question is uh where can i interview where it's not going to be an issue where they're gonna they're gonna be evaluating you on your talent and your experience and your qualifications, not whether or not you got the vax or not. This is the bigger question. Where, mm -hmm. because there's no way to spin this. There's no way to answer this when it is required. Now, so I'd find out on the front end. And, 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 and you know, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I helped you much other no, than to say, you, you got to go do the work where you know you can do the work. So you go after the job where you know you can do the job. And the fact mm -hmm. of the matter is a lot of places, and I'm not, I'm not expressing an opinion, folks. So mm -hmm. the easily offended, please hear me. Mm -hmm. The hospital or the healthcare office gets to set the rules. I support their right to set the rules, and I support Gina's right to not get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. So we got to play within the rules. Yeah. So how much longer before you're out of school? One year. Two are you semesters. are you committed to staying in California? Uh, right now, I am just because we're kind of uh, going through a legal battle through it with it. So I kind of need to stay. A legal case. battle? Yeah, to get us back in. Pro bono, but someone is representing myself in this. Oh, and, and, and representing your right to work in health care and not mm -hmm. be mandated. Well, not, yeah, to do clinicals in health care without right. having to... How long do you, listen, I, res, I respect your right to fight. We only got about 30 mm -hmm. seconds. How long are you willing to fight this before you go, you know what? Screw California. I'm going somewhere else. Well, I've looked at other places as a plan B. I found one one school in Texas. Good. But, um, I'm not sure yet. I'm still waiting for an answer, like a clear, definite, def I get it. definitive answer. I get so. it. And I love a fight. I love a good fight. I love an honorable mm -hmm. fight. And this is one. But let me just tell you, Gina, at some point you go, is this a battle that I want to continue. Um, but but I'm, I'm sorry you're dealing with this. Uh, but the rules are the rules. I mean, I don't have to like the rules. You know, it's it's like I've been saying, you know, look, if you're working in a place that that is, is uh, misaligned or you're misaligned, there's only so much you can do. Leave. And so if you can't work in healthcare in California... Because of the rules, it sucks, but it is what it is. It's a leaf. It's going to be okay. Uh, hang in there, Gina, uh, but decide when enough is enough and then make a better decision for your future. Thank you so much for the call. This is the Ken Coleman Show. You were created to fill a unique role in and through your work. Now, some of you may be going, I have no idea what that is. Some of you may be saying, 
I know what I want to do, but I don't know how to get there. I felt all of those emotions. I've been where you are, and I can tell you, there's hope. That's why I wrote the book, From Paycheck to Purpose. You can make the income you want and the impact that you desire, and I know that you have what it takes. Folks, welcome back. Coaching you up so you have the competitive edge to do work you were born to do. By the way, when you're doing work you're born to do, it just simplifies everything. Here's what I know about doing work you were born to do. You're going to be so freaking good at it, and you're just going to love it. And you'll always be motivated to do it because of the missional result. I, and I got news for everybody. If you do the work you were born to do in a healthy culture, now this is the that's the key. All right. Do work you were born to do in a healthy culture, healthy environment, and you'll never, ever, ever burn out until the day you die. And then your flame is extinguished. <laughs> Ain't no more pilot light, folks. Right? But can, can I just tell you? It's that simple. And that's what we're here to do. Let's go. Jacob's up next in Bremerton, Washington. Jacob, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. How are you? I'm living the dream, Jacob. What are you doing? Oh, I'm working on living the dream. That's what I like to hear. How can I help? Uh, so I am transitioning out of the military, and I have a couple of recruiting companies that I've been talking to to find a job. Uh, one of them is looking for me to go exclusively with them and not reach out to other other companies or really any any other resources. They want me to just stick with them. Uh, looking at what they have available, they do have a really good uh, transition program. So I'm just wondering if that's a, a good thing to go to. Uh, I feel like I'm limiting my options if I do that, though. Uh, well, first of all, let me say this, Jacob. Thank you for serving our country. You're a great American. Uh, Thank you. I don't think it's a bad option to date them. So I think there's a little bit more behind your question, a little bit more detail that I want you to give me. But I, I'm all for you dating them for a while. I'm not ready to tell you that I think that uh, you need to marry them. But uh, they are recruiting you, and they want you. That's a good thing. This is just about you figuring out what do I need to do in this process of dating uh, to where I determine whether or not I want them. So, okay. I, but I'm not concerned about this unless that you have to commit to date. Is that what's going on? Can you give me a little bit more background about what's going on here with your concern? What's causing you to pause and call me? Uh, so I have a lot of resources. I mean, the military gives you a lot of resources for transitioning out. And I do have some other recruiting companies that, um, that can help. My, I guess I'm just looking at, if I only go with them, am I limiting my options for, you know, looking at jobs, you know, on, on my own or we're going with some of these other companies that may end up having something that's just as good or better okay, than when what you this say, other company can offer. Okay. When you say go with them, you mean sign a deal with them to where they're your recruiter and, and you they, you can't have any other recruiters work for right. you? Right. Yes. Really? They can do yes. that? That That is something they can do, yes. That's something that they that they'll want you to do for sure. Well, I know that. I know they don't want you to do it, but I mean, what binding, I, I, and I'm asking from a unintelligent viewpoint, can a recruiter, it's not a legally binding document, is it? Uh, I'm not sure if that's how that works exactly, but uh, that is definitely a concern of mine. Okay. And so did I understand that uh, they are recruiting you, but but they actually have positions for you? Is that what I'm understanding? Uh, so it, it's, it's a little bit down the road. They have a preparation program. And then, uh, later on about, a would say about two months before I get out, they'll, but they do a, a hiring conference and that's really their, that's their main, uh, their main avenue for looking for me to get a job. Okay. Well, okay. So my gut, my gut reaction is I would not, uh, I would not sign some exclusivity with them. I think your I think your common sense has said, eh, 
there's so many options out there um, from a recruiting standpoint, A. B, you know, you can find these opportunities as well. Certainly recruiters are effective, and I'm a fan of using recruiters. I, I endorse ZipRecruiter. I think ZipRecruiter is right. great. You ought to be going to them too. You ought to sign up a profile today at ZipRecruiter.com. Okay, great. So I'm all for it. I just don't – I'm one of these guys that loves to challenge the process. I can't help myself. And so I just don't know how they can bind you to that. Uh, so the answer is if it's binding or in their mind it's binding, then I'd say, sorry, guys, I'm not going to go exclusive. It's a big old whole wide world out there, baby. I'm a free agent, man. I'm Jacob, baby. There's a lot of people that want me. That's what I would do. And again, thank you for your service and thank you for the call. Do you know what you were born to do? In order to get hired at a job you love, you need to get clear on your talent, passion, and mission. That's why our team created the Career Clarity Guide. In just a few minutes, this free tool will walk you through a process to discover what you do best, talent, the work you love to do, passion, and the results you want your work to produce. That's mission. Then you're going to feel way more confident throughout the job search process. To get started, go now to kencoleman.com clarity. Folks, you hear that music? Well done, Joe. We're rocking it. Rocking this new work order here, helping you get the edge, baby. Yeah, get the edge. You are competing. You're competing, and until you figure that out, you're not going to win to the level that you could win more money and more impact. I'm here to help you. I'm your coach. I feel like today I need a whistle. Uh, some days I'm a little bit more fired up than others. I got to tell you, I want to give a big shout out really quick uh, to Allie Evans, who is watching live on YouTube, and she's in the chat room where she was moments ago. Uh, she said, hey, we got a lot of people watching and not many likes. Hit the thumbs up, peeps. I love you, Allie. Thank you. So I'm, I'm jumping on board. Come on. We're growing. We've had two record months in a row of growth on YouTube. We're growing in every area. And the way we grow is you subscribing and you hitting the thumbs up. And I don't ask you people to do much. I never ask you to do this. In fact, the team's telling me, Kit, you got to get people to hit the thumbs up. So here it is. Let's go. YouTube crazies. Lead the charge. I'm talking to you. Oh, you come in here and you say things to me all the time on the chat room. You say nice things. You don't really love me if you don't hit the thumbs up right now. Let's go. I'm seeing it jump. I'm watching live. I'm about ready to do a coaching call with Lynn. Make no mistake, I'll be watching the thumbs up button right here out of this little left eye here. Peripheral vision. Yes. Let's go. Drive those thumbs up. Just click it right there Uh below the window so there you go right there do it do it do it all right hey uh i mentioned our last caller who was asking me about recruiters i said you got to go to zip recruiter why well let's start with zip recruiter is one of the top hiring sites in the nation they make the job search less sucky because of their artificial intelligence and their unbelievable technology where they send you job opportunities in your email and you can apply with one click you don't have to fill out a new resume and, oh, by the way, they're always pitching you and your resume based on your profile that takes you just five minutes or less to fill out at ZipRecruiter.com. So while you're working, while you're doing life, they're pitching you. I don't know why you wouldn't add it to your resources because it's free. I'm not asking you people to buy socks. I'm telling you sign up for free to one of the top job sites in the world. There you go, ZipRecruiter.com. I don't know why you wouldn't do that. Go, go, go. All right, Rio Rancho, New Mexico is where Lynn is joining us. Lynn, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi. Hi, Lynn. How are you doing? Lynn, I'm having the time of my life. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Good. What's your question today? So I'm a 16-year-old who plans on graduating next year wow. and would like to start a dog training business, but they've been told time and time again that I need to have a business degree, go to college in order to start my business. What do you think? That is total, utter, hot 
stinking garbage. How about that? Yeah. Was I clear enough on that one? You were. You were definitely clear. Yeah, now here's why this is potentially problematic. My guess is, is that you've had some people that you really respect and love in your life that have told you this. And so it's like That's really... Correct. Oh, I know. So how does that make you feel? What's the inner battle going on with you? It definitely makes me feel like I'm not living up to my to their potential. Yeah. Who told you this? Do you mind telling me? Um, it was my mom. Yeah, that stinks. Because mom's awesome. Mom loves you. Mom, she definitely does. She definitely does. And listen to me. Mom, mom really wants the best for you. I agree. So what I don't want you to hear is that while I think what mom said is wrong and I had some fun with it and how I described how wrong it was, she's yeah. not she's not saying that. She's not intentionally trying to misguide you. Mom is looking at 16-year-old Lynn and she's going, I got all these big dreams for Lynn and I feel like maybe if Lynn doesn't go to college, I failed as a mom. That's what's going on. I think that that's exactly what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so here's the deal. We've got some tension we have to navigate. Okay? So. Yes. What does it take for you? You tell me. You've done the research. You're 16-year-old calling a national show about what you want to do with your life. This is amazing. So what do you have to do to be a good dog trainer? Um, I need to have experience in dog training as well as I need to know how to correctly run a business. Right. Right. So let's f focus on part A, be good at training dogs. How would one, yes. teach me for a second, how would one go about be getting good at training dogs? What would I need to learn and then what would I need to do? Um, well, for starters, a lot of it is completely self-taught. Yep. And then second, it's just that experience. Get around dogs, get around people. That's right. You're watching every YouTube video of some of the world's greatest dog trainers, right? I bet they're out there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. You're listening to podcasts about dog training. You're reading all the oh, top yeah. selling books of all time on dog training. Yes. Now that's your homework. And now once you do those three things, Lynn, you become an expert. And then you have to now go, all right. I like this from this book. I thought this was really good from this podcast. I really appreciated this from this YouTube video. And you begin to put together your own style. Make sense? Yes. All yes. right. Now. It definitely does. All right. So then you just start putting the word out there. And I mean like this year because you're still in school. Mom and dad mm -hmm. are taking care of rent and clothing and everything you could possibly desire. And so you yes. get to just focus on. Signing up people who need their puppy trained. And you okay. help puppy. And every time you yeah. help puppy, you do what 16-year-olds are so stinking good at right now and put testimonials and lessons on TikTok and Instagram. And you build your reputation and you build your bank account. Notice I yeah. didn't say anything about building a business. Because, Lynn, when you build your reputation, yeah, one puppy at a time, and you build your bank account one puppy at a time. We can go learn how to expand the business down the road. And that's just yeah. getting a really good accountant when you get to the point where you can't do that. That's you maybe taking a accounting class or a business class online. Or maybe you come to Entree Leadership. You call me yeah. a year or two from now and I'm going to give you a free ticket to one of our world-class events called Entree Leadership Master Series. That is my promise to you, Lynn. That would be great. Yeah, I'll comp you. And we'll teach you how to start a business and grow a business. You don't need to go to college. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, that would be incredible. Well, it's my guarantee to you. So I'm going to put you on hold. I want Amanda to get all your information. I want you to get Amanda's information or actually get Alex, the producer's information. And when you're ready to come to Entree Master Series, that is a free ticket on me. You got it? Yes. All right. Now, here's the last piece and I got to go. You got to sit down with mom and say, mom, I get it. But right now, I'm just going to focus on launching this as a side business. We'll figure out college down the road. And you're going to build up the build up the evidence that you don't need to go to college in the form of a bank account. That's how you do it, kiddo. Oh, my gosh, am I floating. Lynn, 16 years of age, folks. All right, here we go. Okay, 
So I told you I wanted you to hear and see a little wisdom from Tom Hanks for our video audience. You're going to watch this with us for the podcast. You can listen along. This is Tom Hanks with some of the best advice for all of us who are on purpose trying to go from where we are to where we want to be. Roll it. <laughs> I wish I had known that this too shall pass. Yeah. Mm. You feel bad right now? You feel pissed mm. off? You feel angry? Yes, this too shall pass. Oh, great. You feel great? You feel like you know all the answers. Yeah, yeah. You feel like that everybody yeah. finally gets you, yeah, yeah. and uh, there you are. Yeah. This, this too shall pass. pass. Ooh, Time is your ally, mm. and if nothing else, just wait. Just wait. Just oh. wait it out. Right? Just. Is that not brilliant, folks? So what he's doing is he's sitting at a round table um, with Jamie Foxx, Robert De Niro, other Best Actor nominees, and they're just kind of talking about life. And this advice, this too shall pass, the good, the bad, the up in the air. And that's how I wanted to close today's show, because here's what I know. If you listen or watch this show, it's for one collective reason. You're not where you want to be. Maybe you're not where you want to be financially in your income. Maybe you're not where you want to be professionally and doing work that fills your heart. It's okay. Keep showing up. Keep showing up and wait for the results to come in. You matter. You have what it takes. Press on. Thanks for listening to The Ken Coleman Show. For more, you can find the show on demand wherever you listen to podcasts and watch the show on YouTube. You can also find Ken across all social media by following at Ken Coleman.